Let's discuss counterterrorism operations and why they are so hard. We'll do this by discussing definition, strategy, jurisdiction, authorities, permissions, and then we will get a bit more tactical by discussing intelligence, cooperation, readiness, tiers, and redundancy. In November, we celebrate both Veterans Day and Thanksgiving. I'm going to donate 100% of all profits from merchandise this November to the Green Beret Foundation. Be sure to support the channel and the Green Beret Foundation by buying a t-shirt, a cap, or a mug. Now let's get back to your video. Counterterrorism incorporates the practice, military tactics, techniques, and strategies that governments, military law enforcement businesses, and intelligence agencies use to combat or eliminate terrorists, their organizations, or networks, in order to render them incapable of using evil to instill fear and to coerce the government or citizens to react in accordance with these terrorist goals. The U.S. has a counterterrorism strategy. It basically states that the U.S. will use all available instruments of U.S. national power to counter terrorism. The strategy will protect the United States against all terrorists. The strategy places America first and emphasizes protection of the homeland, but it also recognizes that America first doesn't mean America alone. I've already made a video about the instruments of national power. The U.S. counterterrorism strategy integrates our instruments of national power to achieve our end states through the following strategic objectives. The capacity of terrorism is sharply diminished. Their sources of strength and support in the homeland are diminished. Americans are prepared and protected from terrorist attacks in the homeland. Public, private, and foreign partners take a greater role in preventing counterterrorism. Terrorists are unable to acquire or use weapons of mass destruction, including chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear weapons, and other advanced weaponry. Oops. There is a significant counterterrorism overlap within the U.S. government to include the Department of Homeland Security, the State Department's Bureau of Counterterrorism, the National Counterterrorism Center under the Office of the Director of National Intel is also a key strategic player in the war on terrorism. But on a more tactical level, the FBI is the nation's lead federal law enforcement agency for investigating and preventing acts of domestic and international terrorism. And then we have the military. For the most part, the Posse Comitatus Act of 1878 limits the use of federal military personnel to enforce domestic policies within the United States. This also includes counterterrorism. But the U.S. military certainly is used to fight terrorism everywhere else in the world. Authorities to conduct counterterrorism within the U.S. are given to the FBI and local police forces. Authorities for the U.S. military to conduct counterterrorism operations, OCONUS, which is outside the continental United States, usually have two main sources. The first is the U.S. Congress. And in accordance with the U.S. Constitution, only Congress has the authority to declare war or to organize, arm, and fund the military. The second authority is the Wars Power Act of 1973, which gives the President permission to wage war in an emergency for up to 60 days without congressional consent. However, the President must notify Congress within 48 hours. I've already made a video about the differences between overt, covert, and clandestine operations. But as you can imagine, sometimes the U.S. will do a counterterrorism mission on foreign soil without permission from that country. But more frequently, we coordinate with and seek permission to operate from our allies and our partners. Intelligence is the driving factor for military operations. And for this reason, it is essential that we have good intelligence before we launch national assets across the globe to go prosecute a counterterrorism mission. Counterterrorism intel comes from a variety of open and classified sources, ranging from informants on the ground who call a hotline to get a reward, to the CIA, the DIA, local soft units, or even a cybersecurity analyst. 
Counterterrorism missions within the U.S. require cooperation from a dozen of entities and organizations. Counterterrorism missions outside the continental United States may be done by partners, or unilaterally, which is a fancy way of saying simply by the USA, or bilaterally, which means with assets or assistance from one other country, or via coalition. And this requires working and fighting in foreign nations and sometimes in foreign languages. The men and women who execute counterterrorism missions are highly trained individuals who are frequently on standby and always ready to go at a moment's notice to the far side of the world to execute a mission. Tiers for counterterrorism mission exist in both domestic terrorism events and OCONUS terrorism events. Within the United States, a local police special weapons and tactics or SWAT team might be called in to confront a local terrorist attack. Many federal law enforcement agencies also have their own versions of special tactics teams. And of course, we've all heard of the FBI SWAT team. Counterterrorism missions outside the United States might be done by a special forces team, a SEAL team, a MARSOC team, or even an AFSOC team. But if time permits or the target is important enough, Tier 1 units within JSOC will execute the CT operation. Although JSOC may be the best CT force in the world, other forces, from other branches, gives the US military important redundancy. Should a bad guy present himself for a short duration, the forward deployed forces on the ground might be called to prosecute the target. Having multiple soft units capable to kill capture terrorists or to disrupt and destroy their networks is an effective way to maintain our national security. Okay, there you have it, a quick overview of why counterterrorism missions are so complex. Usually when we mention counterterrorism, we think of a muscle-bound special operator who courageously engages the enemies of our nation with a significant degree of precision. But behind these heroes, there is a network of bureaucrats giving them permission, intel experts feeding them targets, and a whole group of people writing policy and micromanaging decisions. Would you rather be the CT policymaker, the intel analyst, or the operator kicking in the door? Let me know in the comments below. Please like and subscribe if you want to join my life as a special operations team. And don't forget to forward this video to a friend who needs to see it. Life is a special operation. Are you ready for it?